first film I made, which you haven't seen, where my work has its birthplace, in a sense, is an amateur film called The Forgotten Faces, which I made in 1960, which is a reconstruction, in quotes, of the 1956 Hungarian uprising, which I made as if it was being filmed in Budapest, but I filmed just near Canterbury Cathedral in England. So the film is a complete cheat. And there are many people who've looked at the film and assumed that it was made in Hungary in 1956. And the basis for that film was the photographs taken in Parry Match and also many other photographs, but mainly a very strong series of photographs in Parry Match, not film, photographs, which I studied endlessly before I made The Forgotten Faces. I looked at these photographs, I looked at where the camera was and how the people looked into the lens and how sometimes there was a part of a body. In other words, I was looking at something to see how I would recreate reality and give it a special feel that would enable the onlooker to believe that it was reality, even though there would be other elements which would make clear, I hoped, that it wasn't. In other words, at that very beginning time, I was starting to play with, and I don't mean that in a superficial way, to uh, interrogate the form of real what we call reality. Showing that, in fact, it's highly uh, individual and subjective, what we call reality. And it does not have an authoritarian, strict, true, objective form. There are links to do with my personal life, with my family life. I know from myself that the links between my work and myself are very, very strong. I'm not the best person to say it is this link and that link, but I know that they are there. Um, just as one's past shapes one's character and one's beliefs in many ways, you cannot, I don't believe, I personally don't believe, you can separate that from the creative process. So if a filmmaker or a, an artist says, my past has nothing to do with my art, I, I have to look at the person and say, I think you're lying. Or I don't think you're thinking about the real genesis of your work. So it's very, very, very complicated. And of course, it's the same for me. I'm, I'm a child of World War II. And many people are a child of World War II. They haven't all gone on to make films like I've done, so there's been something else as well. But I've always been very concerned about the subject of war. It's occupied me a lot. I don't know where that comes from. I was in England during the war, but many other people were. Of course I believe that. I believe that absolutely entirely. The fact that my work has been marginalised as my life has gone on. This has affected me very much. Um, this has affected the subjects I make. This has affected my political viewpoint. This has affected many things. So I don't believe, or I'm not interested in, the idea of a neutral artist. Even if there is such a thing, I don't think it interests me very much, frankly. So it's to try and indicate that this thing called documentary is a, is a, is a creation, is a, is a fake. I'm doing that not just for pleasure. Some artists, I think, like to play with form. I'm not interested in that, because it's cost me too high a price to do this in my life. I'm interested in that not only for creative reasons, but for political and social reasons. And that, I think, is where my work has gone wrong. And that's caused me a very big price. And that's why my work has been marginalised so excessively in my profession, because you're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to ask questions of that kind, because it makes my profession uncomfortable. I'm Peter Watkins, and uh, with uh, some of my family and friends, we're here in Grutor Park, uh, which is uh, in 
Lithuania. It's actually a very evocative and rather strange sort of theme park we're in. A local entrepreneur here went round the backyards of Vilnius uh, some few years ago, collecting together all the statues of Lenin, Marx, and the other merry band that he could find, and brought them out to this swampland in the south of Lithuania and constructed a theme park to the Soviet period. To a number of Lithuanians, it is a disaster to, as they see it, put these statues of these murderers in a sylvan setting with birds twittering and trees. But I think probably to others, and I'm sure there are others who see this as a possibility to really reflect on man's unbelievable folly and inhumanity and I suppose the endless repetition sadly, of history. You don't set out to make a program of how your life's work is going to be and what it's based on, and things evolve and change. But at the same time, you may well start with certain intuitive ideas or feelings or wishes or ideologies of various things which you don't necessarily identify in yourself. And maybe as you get older, you gradually start to identify why you're doing what you're doing. You don't necessarily think it out as a program when you're age 20 or 25. Some people never think it out. They just don't. And, uh, I have to some degree because... Um, uh, as the as the years have gone on, and I think this maybe is what separates my work from a lot. I certainly won't say all, but I will say most audiovisual stuff, um, because in some ways I am very conscious of what I am doing as a filmmaker. It's a strange mixture of being extremely intuitive and spontaneous, but also thinking about what I'm doing, it's a, like a combination of various elements which are normally not consciously fused together in film, at least certainly not in something that's called documentary. So I'm not sure you can call my work documentary to start with. I'm not even sure what you can call documentary. I think it is a very misleading expression. I'm not interested only in my process, unpredictable process of the, aud the people who participate, the audience, and the unpredictable processes of the people who are in the film. There's three elements. My process, the people who are the subjects or the actors or whatever you want to call them in the film or the recreators, and the audience. In the audiovisual field, the audience is always simply there mostly as a passive receiving element, which they're not, of course, but they're seen as this. I, I, I'm very interested in challenge the people to think uh, what I'm doing. What I'm doing is creating an environment for them uh, by getting them to think about the subject, by getting them to read about it, by talking to them about it, by having them work together in a way that's not like ordinary filmmaking and with having it's just a process of, it's collective in a sense. And, and always offering people the opportunity of, even if I give them something to say, of saying, now change that, put that into your own words, that's already uh, a step away from the traditional. But it's to do with creating an environment whereby people feel involved, they feel it is important, they feel it has connection with them, they feel, even if it's about history, that it has connection with them. I mean, it's, all these things have connection. So you don't direct in the simple way. You create something else. And that process, as my films have evolved, I hope, has become a bit less 
directed and a bit more space for the people to, in, to become involved in the research, in thinking about what they're going to say, thinking about how they, they may react. And that's very difficult, you know. To what degree do you let something become totally spontaneous, maybe chaotic, or to what degree do you control? And that's, very, and that's a, a question I always ask myself about my own role, to what degree I control. And, and obviously, I'm there all the time, somehow or another. But what I'm experimenting with my work is trying to see how much I can also step back from that and have other people come in and express themselves. I do not regard my work as the most radical kind of work that can be done because of my controlling factor, which is always there somewhere. I see myself as somewhere but in the voyage between a totally free video artist and the authoritarian television. That middle area is a very important area because it's an area that if more people in television went into it, they could liberate themselves and the audience. And I think to a lot of people in the mass media, the totally free video artists may be something they could never think of. Who knows? It's too, it's too free or too radical. It's that middle ground. I've been very much experimenting with that. And I don't think, to be honest with you, I can ever look at any of my films and say, really, I've completely given over all my control to everyone else. I can't do that. Partly because I've always been editing. I suppose because I like editing. This is the trap. Like a painter likes painting. Well, I'm not sure I should say problems, but let's say these are the challenges. We put images and sounds together, but we never discuss with the audience, with people, what it means to do this. What effect is this having on society? What is it having on history? What is it happening on our personal feelings? What is it happening on the way we speak to each other? What effect is it happening on the way we think about time, space, structure, and process? Constantly, it's working in a very manipulative, authoritarian, fixed, regulated, programmatic, hierarchical way with all those things. And we as human beings, we try not to do that. And we try and be complicated in our memories, our feelings, but not the pictures and sounds we see. As for history, um, for me, history is then, now, tomorrow. It's a constantly revolving, linking process. And I've always been worried about the way we don't honor or reflect history. I think it's becoming, I'm sorry to say this, I'm very pessimistic. I used not to be, maybe even up to five years ago, but I think about this a lot. I wonder why it is that as a species, we have allowed this to happen. We seem as a species to be very much influenced by moving pictures, moving pictures and sound. We give them incredible, we give them credence, believability. We're impressed. We don't like criticizing them. There are a number of people who are critical, either intuitively critical, naturally critical, who remember things from the past for whatever reasons. But I think there's also a hopelessness now. Many people are feeling there's nothing they can do as individuals. There's a great passivity. I have people who listen to what I'm saying and say, well, very sympathetic people, people who love film, but they don't like to hear that there may be something in the audiovisual process, including in their, some of their films, that is a part, possibly, of problem in some ways, because it's part of a hierarchical structure process. It's part of it. That worries me. It's always worried me, and I can't talk about this much. It's too, yeah, it's, we say in English, touching the Holy Grail too much, unfortunately. It's, just, it's a lack of critical thinking, you know, it's really basically, it's, it's that real critical, 
self-critical thinking as well. It's that.